No intro today. Let's just fucking hit it. Hello everyone and welcome to the Beta Geeks, the weekly grab bag of topics covering movies, comics, video games and TV. My name is Jags. I am the Beardmaster Extraordinaire with me today, Patrick Brown. Hey. Oh, and he's back. <laughs> back. I don't have to stare at the wall today. Back in the beard cave. I just like stared at an empty seat last week. I'm just like, I'm so lonely. <laughs> oh, mate, I missed you. I should have been here. That's all right, bud. I bailed. Fucking Marvel. I'll send him a dirty email. Dear <laughs> Kevin Feige, who's not anything related to Patrick Brown's work. <laughs> How dare you? He belongs to me. I knew him first. Fuck you. I love your movies. Love Brent. (laughs) That was pretty good last week. Um, It was very different doing the solo episode, but yeah, it went pretty well. You did a good job. Like I I listened to it. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah, for a solo Um, effort. That was awesome. Yeah, got some good feedback. So Mm. yeah, that was pretty good. So, yeah. um, if that's, it happens, that's dedication, keeping that show running. Gotta mate. keep it going, mate. Yep. Gotta keep him happy. No matter what, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it went really well. Um, yeah, got some good feedback, and, uh, you know, if I have to do it again, uh, not so scary, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, you going, buddy? Yeah. I yep. missed ya. Yep, going well. I forgot what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look a bit different now. I've shaved my head a little bit more, and. You're getting that summer. You got, got that of, summer look going. Kind of got rid of my beard a little bit too. It was quite thick before. Now you don't look any different. <laughs> you don't look any different. No, nah, I was getting a bit scruffy. I had to clean it up a bit. You're a bit pale, if anything. You yeah. got to get some more sun. I know. I need some sun. I think you need to put like a like a sunlight like above your desk. So yeah, you just get like some sun at a certain time of day. You can just tip your head back and yeah. get some fucking sun on your face. Well, I was kind of counting on this weekend. I mean, we're going up to Binalong Bay. Or well, what did I call it before? It's been, been a long day. Been a long day. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> it's been a long day. But yeah, we're going up there for the weekend. But it's going to rain all weekend. Like, So you're going to the beach and it's going to rain. rain. Yeah, heavy rain. Like the worst. So. Stay home, mate. We'll go to the pub. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> yeah. Don't go. Stay here. We'll we're go going to pub. stay for two nights up there. So it should be all right, though. We'll probably, um, I don't know, find something to do. <laughs> Play some board games. I'm going to bring Mario up, or Odyssey, and just, like, probably play that. Plug the Switch in. Take the, <laughs> yeah. take the SNES Mini with you as well. Yeah. And some board games. Yeah, yeah. Play some Monopoly. Yeah, the kids will love that. Sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm just going to stay home and play video games all weekend. <laughs> video games. I'm back in The Witcher. Oh, yeah, how's back it Back into it last weekend. I just finished the main game again today. Yeah, nice. And I've just started Hearts of Stone. So yep. I'm just doing like side quests and that at the moment. I'm about to start the first yeah, main cool. mission of Hearts of Stone. Oh, so you've got through the game before. This is your second time of getting through it. Yeah, so main, I've main story. I played on the um the base game and then I bought the game of the year edition, which has got everything. So I had oh, to start yeah. a whole new game. So I've started that and I've just finished it. So I started it, played it for ages, mm. went on to other things and other games, and now I've just come back to it. And I've yeah. just finished the main game just today. And, uh, yeah, now I'm on to Hearts of Stone. Once I get through mm. that, and then on to Blood and Wine. Yeah, Hearts of Off Stone. Off to Tucson. Really good. Oh, you're going to love that. That's that's just... Sunny all the time. That's the highlight. I love that. They mm. did a really good number on that one. And, um, but yeah, Hearts of Stone's really good. I reckon you'll really enjoy it. It's, um, the story's pretty good and... Yeah. I think it's pretty short, but it's, it's, um, yeah, pretty enjoyable right through. I got to do everything though. It's hard. There's some bits in there that are really hard, like challenging and... There was one guy, I think, at the start that you got to go up against and, like, one-on-one kind of... Well, it's actually not one-on-one. There's, like, a bunch of other guys you got to take down. But there's a boss. Mm. He's hard. He's, like, one of the hardest I've ever fought. Usually, I feel quite confident because you, you're pretty strong and, and you can you know all your tricks, but he's, he's like a wizard or something. Yeah, really hard, but... Mm. I just fought a golem before. I was oh, just right. got, going around the map and just checking out all the question marks. I've got every single question mark in Velen and Novigrad, except for one. <laughs> it's like this underground, like, elven ruin. I don't know how to get into it. I haven't looked it up. Is that the but, one on your own? There's, like, a hill and there's trees and stuff, and then underneath it, that's probably the yeah, there's like same a, one. Yeah. There's, like, stairs and shit, and it's all, like, broken, and then underneath the icons, like, under the ground, and I'm like, how oh, the okay. fuck do I get under there? It must be a different bit. Yeah, there's one I found. It was on a hill, and... and like, I'm on the hill, and then the icon's under the ground somewhere, and I just, there's, like, a heap of harpies up, ab- up above, and I had to kill them all the time. Yeah, I think that's the same thing. Mm. Mm. I had no idea how to get under there. I don't even know where to where to start, so. Fuck. Yeah. Games. <laughs> so, how you been? What you yeah. been doing? You saw... Going well. You told me you saw Justice League. 
Yeah, yeah, saw Justice League, Justice League the other day. Uh, Tell me all about it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I actually... What? I did, yeah, I did. <laughs> Surprisingly. Patrick I, Brown likes a DC movie. <laughs> yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. I think probably because I went into it kind of... I actually, I heard that it was quite good as well, but I also heard other mixed reviews. But I don't really base off that. I was I was just kind of thinking, all right, I'll just give it a shot. Go in and a have shot. a good time. And then... Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed it. You know, it was, yeah, just good fun, I'd say. And, um, without, I can't spoil it. There's some moments in that I, that I would love to talk about, but I, yeah, I just can't spoil them. So that I think, you know, the bit I was, I think you warned me about it. You're like, there's a bit right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Or so that happens. And it's like, oh, that is like the best. That's worth watching the movie just for that. I was like, I agreed because that was, yeah, the highlight for me. I would watch it just for that part. All right, we're going to do, we'll do a 60 second Justice League spoiler section starting <laughs> yes. now. Go, Patrick Brown. Yeah. So when Superman is uh, being brought back to life, and I, I didn't realize he was actually going to get brought back to life, I thought he was going to come back on his own, but. Yeah, and then uh, the fact that they're like, oh, he's confused, like he, he was yeah, real, like real dazed. Yeah, like the dark Superman kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, he was like Superman, real, yeah. you didn't know what to expect, that's what it was, it was like, you, you look at him, you're like, you don't really know if that's the real, like, if that's still him, or if he's like a bad, or, or like just, he's, and then it, you start thinking in your mind, oh, he's like this machine, like he could tear this planet down if he mm. wanted to, um, and they've just woken him, like. So that was really cool. I think that was my. I think that was my favorite scene in the movie. That was mine too. Because yeah. I, I I get real real soft in the chest for anything Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, um, you know, and Flash goes around him like really quick. Oh, and he looks, yeah. And he's and it goes in slow mo, and you just Three, see his eye look around. Two, one, end of the spoiler section. <laughs> yeah. But that just was like really spoiler section. Yeah, I love that bit too. Mm. People won't know what we're talking about if they haven't seen it because they jump over the bloody spoiler section. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, not going as well as Warner Brothers might have wanted. All I right. checked the box office today, and I think it's made almost five hundred million worldwide, which is nothing to scoff at. That's but pretty good, yeah. You know, I think they said for it to make a profit. It had to be around the seven hundred million, Ooh. sort of worldwide. Okay, maybe it'll get to that. Maybe it'll inch toward that. But I, uh, yeah, I don't know if it'll get that close. But you know, it's still probably got a good chance of getting there. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I just really want to see. Um, I, I kind of want to see uh, more Batman. Like they, were, they had a part, like a section at the beginning, and and that was just like Batman in his element, and it was. Mm. You get a little taste of what it would be like. To have your own solo Batman movie with Ben Affleck. Which we're going to get. Maybe not with Ben Affleck. More than unlikely. Yeah. Did and you that, listen to the show last week really where well. I talked about you know, Jake Gyllenhaal? I love... I, I think that'd be great. Like, it's growing on me more and more now, I think, about it mm. with Jake Gyllenhaal. And he would, he would really be good in that role. Because I really talked about that age gap. Like, we've talked about this before. Yeah. About... You know, he's the old Batman. He's been in Gotham for 20 years and he's been fighting crime and, you know, Affleck's got the old grey wisps up the side, you know. Yeah. And, you know, to have Gyllenhaal do that, like, he's still a very young dude. Like, he's a very young yeah. looking dude. Like, to say, you know, he, he'll be nearly 40, you know, mm. when this comes out or they start to film. So, you know, yeah. like, yep, like a 20 year old Batman mm. fighting crime in Gotham for 20 years. Yeah, I could see that. And Jake Gyllenhaal is still, like, real young. Yeah. They could probably ad- address that maybe once. But, mm. yeah, they don't have to harp on it, like, all the time. Like, yeah. we talked about this week before last about there's a scene in Justice League. Well, I talked about it on the show, so if you listen to it, you've already heard it. Yeah. About where they touch on how you asked if, you know, Batman's suit gets torn and, you know, if he gets beat up a lot, you know, because he is only human. There's that scene on the plane, I think. Yep. And he's, like, he's sort of, like, taking his costume off and Wonder yeah, Woman yeah. comes around the corner and she sort of sees his back and he's, like, covered in bruises mm. and all this sort of shit. And his arm was dislocated or something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, or and that's popped his arm and that back in. Yeah, because he's only human, you know, after yeah. all. So yeah. they really did sort of... They touched on that a bit. And that was pretty Yeah, cool. what they did have, I mm. liked. What did you think of um, Cyborg? Yeah, I actually really enjoyed him. His, yep. his voice is really cool. Like, he's got... I don't know, it's not, it's not the kind of voice I pictured for him. He, he's just... He's really... Um, I know, it was awesome. Like, you just, real deep kind of, I don't know what you'd call it. 
it kind of something straight out of a comic. It's like how I would expect, mm. like a or a, a video game voiceover to be, like a, a but in a good way, like yeah. a, a good one. It was really cool. What do you think I said about the the scenes when they're like trying to save some of that CG money, where he's got like a hoodie and yeah, pants and that? I on. saw that. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, ah, there we go. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> trying to save some of that money there. Yeah, all that CG budget. It's like, why does he need to wear a hoodie? It's not going to keep him warm. Yeah, <laughs> it's, mm. it's not really. It doesn't need to cover up. And we have to talk about the one thing that everyone's been talking about: the CG mustache. Or the CG yes. out of the mustache. At first, that was... Did you notice anything of that? Because apparently, like, the very first scene, like, where the kids are interviewing yeah, him... Yeah, yeah. There's a se- I think I was just so captivated by that scene and, like, Superman. Oh, he's Superman! Yeah. I didn't really even notice. Oh, you didn't notice? That was the only one scene that it really stood out for me. I don't know why. I just looked at him and it was strange. It was weird to look at his mouth and uh at first i forgot about the mustache thing and then i i when i was like what's going on and I, I, it clicked straight away and I, mm. I realized and then um i couldn't stop looking at his mouth for the whole movie but after that it gradually just i forgot about it yeah and, and i didn't even really notice it after a while it doesn't look too bad it's just that, like the top lip yeah. looks glossy it doesn't they haven't sort of nailed it properly yeah something going on there i've been reading more about that though there was a one of the visual effects artists did a um ask me anything on reddit yeah and someone asked him about it and he said look it really just came down to time like the the time where the reshoots were done and the movie was coming out like if we had more time it would have been flawless like, mm. you wouldn't have noticed. It's just that we were, like, trapped in this narrow window. We did the best we could, but we just didn't have the time. Yeah. If we had more time, it would have been flawless. would have been perfect. Yeah. But, you know, there, and there's been all this stuff about, you know, why didn't Warner Brothers just push the release date back? Well, apparently it's because they were going to get, like, tax bonuses or company bonuses or something like that. They were worried that... If they push the movie back into the next year, yeah. you know, they there was some company takeover or something like that, or they're buying some other company or something like that, mm. and they might miss out on those bonuses, or they might not be with the company anymore. So, it really just came down, you know, company greed, yep. yeah. you know. But if, you know, maybe if they pushed it back another, you know, four or five months into February or March or something like that, we would have got the finished Zack Snyder version. Yeah. We would have got a better version of that film. It probably would have been easier to d- give him... To give him a beard. <laughs> like, yeah. He's already got the stash. They should have, like... Because he's in like, in a coffin underground or whatever, so... Yeah. Maybe he could have just grown a beard, like, you know... Wouldn't it have just but, been... It, like, the facial still grows and he's, like, Kryptonian does. or whatever, you know? And then, like, they could have just... Maybe it would have been easier to put a beard on <laughs> and mm. then, like, add to the moustache. Well, apparently, Warner Brothers offered Paramount... They said, look, if he shaves it off, like, we'll do... We'll pay for you guys to do a CG version. And they did like all these previous like CG versions to show Warner Brothers. They're like, yeah. here, here's some Superman footage we've already got. Here's a CG beard we put on. Here's how it looks. Here's how easy it is. Like, we can do this for you. We'll pay for it. And Paramount was just like, nah. They were just like <laughs> real petty about it. They were like, nah, he's not shaving it off. We're not doing like a fake one or whatever. <laughs> it would have just been easier if he just shaved it off. And instead of doing like a CG mustache, they would have just went old school and just stuck a fake mustache they on his could face. Have. They should have done that, actually. Because look at Rick Grimes' beard in, like, The Walking Dead and all this sort of shit. Like, fake facial hair, yeah. you know, it's very convincing now. How much did it cost? Like, didn't you say it cost, like, $300,000 extra to do the stash? Like, all the something CGI like or something? Something It was ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Apparently, the budget blew up to, like, $300 million with reshoots. That's the rumour. Oh, okay, mm. shit. So, if that's true, this is the most expensive comic book movie ever made. Yeah. That's seven hundred million dollar mark to sort of break even, you know, that sort of, mm. or make a profit. That makes sense. It yeah. will make a profit in the long run, like when it comes out in like home video and yeah, you know, uh, on demand and all that sort of stuff. But there was another thing that while we're on Justice League, hit me, man. Flash's run is tripping me out. It's fucking weird, isn't it? It's stupid. It's, it's like, like he's got like those Octo Dad arms. Right? Yeah, it's flopping around everywhere and it doesn't make sense like mm. if anyone was running at that fast super speed if your arms are out that wide um, you would literally have your elbows locked and you'd just be like yeah the, running i mean surely the faster you run you look at but the fastest like sprinters they're always his arms about, dead straight the, yeah. the, the more straight line that your body is is mm. the faster you go and it just wouldn't make sense i think and, they just tried to differentiate they're like we've seen people run really fast we've seen yeah. quicksilver and avengers We've seen The Flash on the TV show. 
how can we make this different for the two or three scenes? Let's just have him, like, his arms are, like, oh. rolling out to the sides and it looks really weird. It was ridiculous, wasn't mm. it? Actually, when you think about it, I didn't, I can't really think of too many scenes where you really see him run properly. Like, I think there's two. There's, like, two scenes where you see him running and mm. that's it. And the and rest, the rest are, are, like, real, like, tight, tight close-ups. Yeah, he's usually just standing there and then it's just, he's, he's disappeared already. Just zipped he, around. He's gone. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. But I, w- I kind of wish I saw a few more kind of like they did with, um, you know, Quicksilver and stuff. From yeah. Like, how you get to see him move around and take down all those guys and stuff like that was really cool. I'd love to see more of that. Anyway, but, yeah. I think DC's heading in the right direction now. Like, they've... You know, all these uh, superheroes and that, they're established sort of in this world and that now, you know, they're not necessarily sort of conflicted anymore. They're like, okay, boom, we're Earth's protectors. That's our job. That's our role. You know, that's what we do now. Like, the setting up at the end of the movie for, like, future films and stuff. Mm. And, you know, like, yeah, if they do another one, you know, they could really kick off, Mm. do it well. You know, like, with all the goodwill and stuff and the hopeful Superman, the bright coloured costume and that. What do you think of Superman's costume? Yeah, really like good. Very blue, very oh, comic book. Oh, you compare standout. that to the first Man of Steel. Man, it's it's just so much more colourful now, and it's mm. it's like it is Superman. That's how he should be. Mm. Uh, and that was another thing I, sh- I thought I mentioned: is Superman is he's great in this, like smiling, actually, he's, hopeful. Yeah, he's he's very uplifting. Like he it he g- gives you a good feeling. Whereas all the other movies, he's a bit grim or yeah, um, he, the, he's got chip on his shoulder. He's always got a mood. He's like real. Real uh, sad or or something that just mm. puts a depressing vibe on it. Whereas in this one, he's very it's, he's happy and it's, it's it had to like take him dying and coming back to yeah. become the Superman we all know. Yeah, he's the best now. Like mm. I, he was my favorite character out of them all. Used to be Batman was my favorite. Now he was in this movie. He was my favorite mm. out, of, out of all. I love of them. Superman. Yeah, love was, Man of Steel. He was good. Mm. Mm. It was nice to see him a bit more colorful and happy. So, <laughs> mm. what yeah. would you have given it out of five? Close to a four, I would yep. say. Yeah. So, a three and a half. Probably more three, seven, four. 3.75. Let's settle for four. Four. Because I really did enjoy it. I, I walked out, I was like, oh, that was really good. Like, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Good answer. Mm. Good answer. Oh, real quick. Did you finish watching The Punisher? Oh, uh, I'm up to like, I just finished watching episode, or I'm, I'm up to episode 13, something like that. So, I'm nearly at the end, I think. Yep. Yeah. So, episode 13 is the last episode. Is it? <laughs> oh, you're under the you when you bloody see this episode. Yeah, because I... <laughs> Yeah, I just got... The violence upset. is really picking up, have you noticed? Yeah, the last one <laughs> was, like, hell. pretty violent. Really, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, nearly there. But it's it's been um pretty good, yeah. Not too bad overall, but, yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned to the other day, I was still kind of the first, most, the majority of the season I found was a little, I don't know. It was hard to describe. It, it didn't... It wasn't what I expected. I, I kind of wanted to see wasn't him... was punishery enough? I wanted to see him be the Punisher, but mm. he was, uh, he, you know, he hasn't had the outfit or anything, and, and he's just... It's very story-driven, and it's um, a little too much on, uh, on like, nothing. Like, they're not doing much. There's, there's, mm. a, there's not much punishing going on at all. There's a lot happening. Yeah. But there's not a lot of what we actually want mm. happening. It's more, yeah, they're going to, like, go deep into the story and these yeah. conspiracy things. Or I really liked it, though. i got to be yeah. honest, yeah. I do enjoy watching it, but I kind of expect more, yeah, I expect more Punisher stuff. Like, Is John Bernthal the best Punisher ever, Patrick Brown? Mm, well, nah. Because you haven't of, seen the last episode yet. Because of this season, he's great when he, when he does do the action stuff, but I don't really... I don't know why. Maybe it's just because he's not all decked out, but I don't really see the Punisher. I don't know why. Okay. Um, I do. I he's got the look. He's badass. But if he was all decked out, when he is, he definitely is a kick-ass Punisher. And I and I, it's it's all there. Mm-hmm. But when he's just himself, and the majority of the season, I, I haven't. It just hadn't had that feeling for me. I was like, he's not doing anything. <laughs> There's not not really much going on. But I still got it this last episode, so I reckon that'll probably lean me towards him a bit more Mm. i'm a bit still a bit of a thomas jane fan (laughs) (laughs) i did watch dirty laundry again the other day that's a really good show yeah (laughs) and they took the um hans zimmer score from the dark knight the yeah Yeah. Yeah. gotta bring this up yeah uh very good friend of ours very good friend of the show and sometimes co-host russell redmond had his very first stand-up gig last night Ooh, Ooh. a few of them there i bet (laughs) um 
Uh, you and Bob went. I was meant yeah. to go, but I felt really crook last night, so I had to drop out at the 11th hour. But um, apparently he killed it. I saw the video. Yeah. Uh, I think his sister filmed it and put it on YouTube, yeah. one of his mates, and I watched it, and he fucking killed it. What, oh. what was it like live? How it was, was it? It was the craziest thing, because we, when we turned up, um, we were kind of waiting for him to jump on, and but he wasn't till toward the end, pretty much. Uh, so we waited like a couple of hours. And so all the acts we saw before were like very, um, a lot of them, there was a couple that kind of just, you know, failed completely. Like they mm. couldn't do much at all. And the one poor guy, he got up there and choked. He just couldn't. No oh, shit. The stage just got to him, I think. And, and I felt terrible for the guy, but everyone was so great in the crowd. They were like, it's all right, mate. Just like, yeah, next time and all that. But a lot of the other comedy acts were just like, no, okay, like, yeah, one odd, like, good like, joke or people something would like that. laugh and then the odd, odd, <laughs> odd people were like, but they're all different. Like some were more political kind of comedians and yeah, then other, okay. others were more um, aimed toward like social media and funny, like, you know, to that age. And But um, when Russ went on, like, because so all the other acts were more, I wouldn't say there were many laughs, like it was okay. Mm. As soon as Russ got on... Like, like, he started and he just hit it on the head straight away. Like, yep. he had laughs from the get-go. And yeah. Then, oh, I, I saw the footage. And then I he got in. At home. And as it went on, like, midway, everyone was just cacking it. And then yeah. he just really got the crowd going. And, yeah, I'd, like, out of all of them, he he made the crowd really laugh. It was, it was just great to see. And he, he he's a funny bloke. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he nailed it. Yeah, sweet. Nah, fucking good on you, Russell. I know you listen every week. Um, We might link... We might link that in the uh, in the YouTube info and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If people want to check out, it's only like a nine minute set or whatever. It was hilarious. <laughs> Just on, I think it was like on a phone camera or whatever. But yeah, yeah, he did yeah. a bloody good job. I had fucking few good laughs, and I texted him straight after I watched it. I was like, "You fucking did it, mate. I'm so proud of you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, good on you, Russ. You fucking killed it. You built for that shit, mate. It was a bit of a proud moment at the end, just because we like, you know, we, we're mates with him, and yeah. After he de- after he did it, and everyone was cheering him, and that it was just like, oh, fucking you legend. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Nah, he's built for that shit. Yeah, he's built for that he shit. he needs to do it more. I reckon he could actually go far with that stuff. So mm. Mm. I got a little bit more on Battlefront too. If you want to hear mm. it, pretty much new stuff every week. I, I I keep my eye on it. This is just in today. Um, the game's been out for what, like three, three and a half weeks, something like that, almost yeah. a month. Yep. EA's reportings have come in for the last month. Their stocks are down 8.5%. All oh, right. Since a month ago. Yeah. Which equates to $3.1 billion. <laughs> oh, really? I know, right? $3.1 billion out of pocket. The, you know, the equation of like the stock loss. Yeah. Which is Fucking insane. Because of everything that's happened. Because of everything with Star Wars Battlefront 2, oh, the wow. microtransactions, like, all the all the media attention. Shot like, themselves in the foot, haven't they, really? Mm. Big time. And there was another there was another bloody thing that came out today. They also said about the Black Friday sales we had last week, and, like, the Black Friday weekend, which they were really counting on to hit off. Yeah. They sold fuck all. There, <laughs> was, one, there was one photo on Reddit. It was of, like, a games case. And there was probably like six or seven shelves, and every shelf was empty except the top shelf, which was all just Star Wars Battlefront Two. <laughs> like no <laughs> one bought any. So like their Black Friday sales, like really just like blew up in their faces. They oh. sold probably fuck all nothing. There was a report. I think one of the EA head honchos was at some telecom conference or something like that, and they said about the loot boxes and stuff, like the reason why there's no like cosmetic stuff, like different skins or you know, different shaders or anything like that, because he he said, oh, you know, if we had, like, different colours for characters, like, if you had, like, a pink Darth Vader, like, you know, that might be cool, but that's not what Darth Vader is. Like, we didn't want to do, um, like, cosmetic stuff because that would mess with Star Wars canon. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. What kind of fucking answer is that? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Like, and people are just like, I'd love to see if I can pink, play as a pink Darth Vader. Just let them have their great. fun, like, you know. It's cares. just a, it's just a game. They it's should... just another excuse. It's just another excuse to justify, yeah. like, why they didn't have that, you know, to justify. Because, you know, EA have pretty much put, like, all their eggs in one basket with, like, the microtransaction mm. situation, that strategy. Like, pretty much all their games now have some microtransaction like they're basically uh, built around it, aren't they? Yeah, now? like that's pretty much like yeah, they've so really put all their eggs in one basket. Like every game they're bringing out now has some form of microtransaction thing. Fuck. They're even talking like Battlefield One and stuff. They're like, oh, looking at implementing um something extra in that. 
and it's just like this is all blowing up in your face now. Like mm. you, like the stocks will probably just keep dropping, and they'll just yeah. lose more and more money unless they change something. So if they were just like loyal to gamers and stuff, and actually did it right. They would actually be the top selling game right now. They're loyal. To they wouldn't rewards. have any on the shelves at all. Like, mm. You know, it, I was keen to buy the game, yeah. but then like the two or three days before, I'm just like, no, fuck that. Mm. Like I'm not. I don't give them my money. No. Maybe in 12 months if they change their tune and the game's like all patched and it runs well and it's got yeah. like maybe more free content or something like that. You'll probably see a lot in, in the EB mm. and that that are all secondhand now too. Yeah. All, everyone's probably trading them in and getting rid of them. It'll be interesting like when they start to... Because EB games, pretty much their their sales and their price is pretty much going popularity. So yep. like if a game's popular, it'll be top dollar for, mm. forever yep. and it'll never go on sale. Whereas if something's shit, like, or, you know, it's not selling as well, they'll drop yeah. the price, like, real quick. Yep. You know? Which is why GTA Five has been, like, top dollar for, like, the last three or four years. Mm. Mm. And it's only now just coming down in price. I think only, like, last month, it finally dropped out of, like, the top ten, like, PS4 sales for the month. Because every month you'd see it was in the top ten sales. Yeah. Mm. It's only now just dropped out. Yeah. Which is insane. Mm. And do you what I said last week? That take two make nearly five million dollars a day just off GTA Online. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Isn't that nuts? That's a lot of money. Yeah, just from like shark cards and yeah. people just. Um, and that I, I saw a little video today about the the laser jet that was just released. Mm. It's basically just um, all it is is just allowing you. It's it's kind of just unlocking it so you don't have to steal it anymore. Like even though the jet's always in the airfield originally like for the last five years or whatever yeah yeah you just pay six and a half million dollars for this jet Fuck just God. so you can not have the police come after you every time i thought it was a brand it. new jet that's why i linked it to you, you basically own it after you get it and you can and i all all you can do it, it doesn't really have any other special abilities um the hydra is still way better than it i think you can just change the color of it or whatever now like you, you can kind of that's about it I'll just steal it and then I'll call Lester for yeah. like 50 bucks and just like remove my wanted level. Yeah, people are hating on that at the moment, just that jet thing at the moment. They're like, oh, that's like a big, you can't even grind away to earn that amount of money just to unlock that jet. Like it's mm. too far gone. You have to pretty much get a shark card, pay like a hundred bucks for a shark card so you can get it. Six and a half million dollars. Mm. It'll yeah. be really interesting to see what happens with Red Dead 2 because, you know, Rockstar and Take Two are pretty much flying under the radar. With mm. their online sales, and they always sort of have like yeah. people go, oh, shark cards, you know, but it hasn't made like the blow up that this has. So mm. maybe they'll just scoot under the radar and still like get away with it all. Or I kind of hope and- that with um, Red Dead coming out, I kind of hope that it does. They open their eyes a bit, like oh, and they tone down any kind of crazy, I don't know, loot boxes, whatever they were going to have for that. Let's hope that they have kind of seen that and they're like, okay, we're going to tone down on that and do mm. what we used to do and just do a good game. Yep. You know, let's hope that happens. We'll see. I'm counting on Red Dead too. Yeah. I, you know, I don't see anything happening in the single player, like anything related to that. It'll just be all online because mm. they know that's where their money is. And they, I guess it, they now know if they fuck with the single player with that sort of shit, mm. that's when they're going to draw controversy. Yeah. You know? Mm, like Shadow of War, for example. Yeah. Like, I looked at that game and I'm like, I really want to play it, but I just don't want to have to grind for ages. I'll mm. get to it eventually, but I'm happy playing The Witcher at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, we better move on, I think. Yep. Yeah, We're doing good. a topic today. We're doing a themed episode. Mm. And our topic for today is we're doing best movie fights. Yeah. So, we've decided to do movie fights. So, like, anything. So, like... Fist fights, knife fights, sword fights, monster not fights, s- monster fights, robot fights, not so much gun fights or shootouts. Mm. That's more of kind of like a Western thing, or yeah. that could probably that's be, almost its whole own a different mm, topic, really. Like isn't it? number one would be like the shootout stuff. from Heat. Yeah, like the bank robbery and the the shootout and the running through the streets. Mm. Like that would be like high on the list, but. Mm. We're not doing a definitive list. We just picked out, like, lots of different fight scenes and that, you know, we just want to talk about. We're just going to bounce back and forward. Mm. But, first of all, it's time for Drop the Beard. (laughs) Drop the Beard. (laughs) And today, because we're doing best movie fights for Drop the Beard, we're doing a theme. And our theme is songs that make us want to fight. (laughs) Fight music. Fight music. Oh, I should have got Mortal Kombat. I didn't even think of that. The song from Mortal Kombat. (laughs) Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. 
<laughs> that would have been a good one. So my song for today, for Drop the Beard, it's the song that makes me want to fight, is Duality by Slipknot. Now That's a good song. I told you this earlier. I think like half of it is because of like the film clip. Yeah. And then when I listen to it, like everyone's just going aggro and they're fucking smashing shit and like fighting and that. But yeah, like if I was having a fight, like play that song in the background because yeah, I would yeah, I'll fight yeah. to the fuck out of that song. Yeah, mm. yeah, nice. Not like Rocky, like you know, Karate Kid. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, you could fight to that in like true eighties fashion. Yeah. Anyway, that's my song, Slipknot Duality. That's a good one. Patrick Brown, what have you got for me? I know what you've got, but you, you bloody tell me. Yeah, I chose... Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this band, actually. Uh, Raunchy, they're called. Yeah. And uh, the song I chose is called The Bash. You love this fucking song. I love it. I, I love it. And the lyrics, everything is, is about fighting. It's like, mm. it's like yeah, getting beat to shit and, and all that stuff. Like it's, But it's more the music and the song is, is really like... Yeah, it gets you going. It's 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 yeah, got a crazy kind of rhythm to it. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's one of those kind of. I could picture that in like a film clip with like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of beat down. Yeah, really. Remember good. that time we did that road trip? We just like we're just gonna jump in the car. It was like in the morning. And we're like we're just gonna drive wherever we want. We're not gonna plan to go anywhere. We're like turn here, turn yeah. there. Oh, let's go this way. Ah, <laughs> oh, the good old days. And then we, I think that song was on the the CD. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I got my photo taken with like a giant like cow statue or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I had it in a headlock. That was in That's like right. Evoca, I think, or somewhere. Yeah, Evoca or something like that. There was some cow out the front. Yeah. I was like, "Stop! I'm gonna get it in a headlock. Take a photo of me." <laughs> the good old days. Yeah, that was good. We used when to just we do young. road trips and stuff. Mm. Go to the uh, Elephant Pancake Barn oh. up in St Helens up there. The That's banana. The what was it? What were the ones I always got? The banana chocolate ones. Yeah, yeah. And they got like savory pancakes too. Ones. Oh, you like... always bought the fucking savory ones. Got, like, <laughs> ham and cheese and stuff. In Here's them. the thing. Here's the thing about Patrick Brown. Okay, oh, if you amazing. go out for dinner with Patrick Brown, or you decide to order food from somewhere, <laughs> Patrick will always buy the weirdest thing on the menu. <laughs> He'd be like, "Oh, like crab's foot. That sounds really good. I'm oh, gonna yeah. get that." Oh, lamb's brain. Yeah, oh, I tried the, a lamb's brain once. The weirdest fucking things they have on there. <laughs> They'd be like, here's Cajun sauce, like, crossed with, like, pasta. We're going to have this. Oh, oh that no. sounds really good. I'm going to get one of them to try. I'm like, just buy, <laughs> just buy a palmy. Buy That's, fish and chips like a normal person. I'll tell you the time when I, I took a lira out for one of our anniversaries or something, and um, we went to the... Uh, the restaurant that's in in the gorge, you know, up in the gorge there. They got oh, yeah. a really nice restaurant in the middle. And uh, anyway, I got I ordered the steak and it came out and I didn't expect it, but I mean, I took a big bite into it and then there was just this big like weird kind of fishy flavor to it <laughs> yes. or some kind of I don't know, it was like a if I was really worried and I I just my face went white and Lyra's like what's wrong and I was like I think I think I just ate like a tumor or something <laughs> that was in like the <laughs> or a cyst or something because it was all like gray and gooey coming out, mm -hmm. and I spat it out and I was like, oh, dry reaching. And then, yeah, I was like nearly dry reaching, and then the and then the, <laughs> the waiter comes over and he's like, is your meal are your meals all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's, it's, <laughs> it's fine, it's only totally fine. And then Lyra's like, no, just to, to say, and she's like, is there something supposed to be something funny going on with this steak? Because uh, yeah. There's something grey coming out of it. He's like, "Oh yeah, that's the that's the oysters in the middle or something like ah. or the muscles or whatever." She's like, it, "It was like a like a surf and turf kind of thing or something." But they put the <laughs> those things inside in like a hole inside the steak, so it's mm. hidden. I didn't know about that, and I <laughs> freaked me out. <laughs> this is funny because I I used to work with butchers. And I, I that's what I thought of at the time. I used to work with butchers, and they they tell me the horror stories about the meat that like mm. you would buy from like the supermarket or the butcher, because you know the butchers cut the meat, but quite often you know there'll be like a big fatty cyst or a tumor or something <laughs> like in it, that in it. You like sent in me the photos meat. before, like yes, I, I I saw one and I took a photo. I was like, wait, I'm gonna take a picture and send it to Pat. And it was this the most disgusting. Oh. Anyway. So, he was telling me all these stories. He's like, yeah, you know, the amount of times, like, we've cut into stuff, we've cut, like, through a tumour or a cyst or something like that. <laughs> and he goes, but the funny thing is, there he goes, there are those times. He's like, if I just cut that another quarter of an inch to the left, he's like, I would have totally missed that and put that <laughs> and wrapped that. And somebody would have bought it. And he's like, 
guaranteed in your life more than once you've eaten a piece of steak or a piece of meat that's had like a tumor or a cyst or something like that in it and you haven't even noticed guaranteed <laughs> oh, everyone's done it we've all done it and i'm just like oh, oh. and i told pat and you should have seen the look on his face and now and that's what like that was shortly after i think when yeah that wasn't that was like a month or wasn't two that after. long after yeah. and that was the first <laughs> thing that stuck into my head i saw that photo you sent me and i was like Oh, I think this is that one moment in my life. <laughs> <laughs> You're chewing on. Is this meant to be green? <laughs> oh, it was like grey, horrible, kind of gooey. And So, ugh. to all those steak lovers out there, just think about that next time you take a bite of a piece of steak. <laughs> Who wants a freaking mussel inside your... Or, or, an, or oyster. an oyster. oyster inside your steak, what anyway. What kind of fucking steak is that? <laughs> just bring it out to me medium it, really. well. Fucking the like a uh, bit of bit of bit of Diane sauce on there. Yeah, just a bit of gravy. I love or something the good like surf that. and turfs that do you know, your classic sauce. steak, and then they throw like uh, the prawns and and uh, scallop, yeah. scallops on top with like garlic sauce. They're the best. But yeah, don't you know. stick a fucking oyster in don't it hide and them not in. tell me. I like to see what I'm gonna eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's ri- the middle of the steak should be so chewy <laughs> and moist. But yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> Anyway, we'll jump onto the news, mate. Do it, yep. That I've only got good. one bit of news today. Is I've incorporated a few other points and that into it. Is that it? I don't know if you know. Uh, a trailer for a little movie called Avengers Infinity War came out today. Mm, I yep. don't know if you saw it. I sent it to you at 2 o'clock this morning. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wet in all the areas I could be wet <laughs> after watching that trailer. So wet right now. <laughs> <laughs> so moist. <laughs> Patrick Brown, what did you think of the Avengers Infinity War trailer? Yeah, I really... The teaser trailer. Really liked it. Yeah, so it's a teaser, so there's going to be another one, I guess. And, and yeah, the next one will be a story one. Ah, uh, good, yep. Yeah, well, this one was pretty good. Um, I think I did expect a little more to see, like, but it was good enough. Like, they, you could see everything going on, and mm. um, I think it was more you didn't really see much of the Guardians until the last bit. Yeah, right and at then, the end. Uh, but Spidey looks really cool, and... Oh. In the iron suit. Yeah, yeah it, it looks awesome. Um, don't know what to think about. Th- uh, Thanos looks all right, it looks, but I liked him better. He, his, his skin color has changed. He was purple before, like really purple, but now mm. he's more pink, pinky kind of skin tone now, mm. and I don't like that. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I, and and it, I don't like that, Marvel. And I would have liked to see him with his armor and all that on too. But. Send him an email, mate. Yeah, but it, he looked good though. Still, he actually the animation in his face is pretty amazing. Oh yeah, it it looks like br- they've got um, that fucking rolling. money for this one. Yeah, yeah, he looked really good though overall. Um, I think um one of the reasons I heard that Thanos doesn't have his armor is because now he has the Infinity Gauntlet and he's got some of the stones. He's so cocky, like he doesn't need the armor anymore. Ah, uh, yep. So he just comes in like his bloody, you know, his Sunday outfit, his yeah. shorts and t-shirt. Yep. You know, his thongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's just come to fucking kill shit and lay shit down. And yeah, it looks it looks really good. Yeah. It looks great. How good does Cap look with a beard? Yeah, I know. He looks And awesome. that line, they're like, get ready, prepare the defenses and get this man a shield. <laughs> yeah. Like, Fuck yes. Yeah, that was good. Oh, uh, no, nah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Mm. Um, I watched it a couple of times. Iron Man gets hammered to the ground by... Thanos. Yeah, fuck yeah. He gives him that big right hook and yeah. boom. And then he grabs, oh, yeah. there's a scene where he grabs like Spider-Man and his whole hand just like wraps around like his, over his shoulders and his chest and stuff and just boom, puts yeah. him into the ground. And I really love that bit on the bus with Spider-Man and, and you see his spider sense. Yeah, work, the, all the, and he's like, and the hairs raised on his arm. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Really like the that. The machine moment. in the sky though, that looks interesting. Like the big floating ring. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried they're going to start to do another Fantastic Four thing there. <laughs> <laughs> End of the world. Or like, it, yeah. I'd- it's interesting, though, because then there's a shot of Thor in it, and he's, like, grabbing a handle, and it looks like he's trying to pull it down. Yeah. But obviously it must be made for Thanos, because he looks quite small in it, like yeah. he's trying to pull down the handle. So it's made for someone quite bigger, so I imagine it's Thanos. Yeah, it's probably like a portal or something, so he can come through. I don't know. Mm. And all the creatures and stuff, the forearm creatures and that, like this big battle scene at Wakanda mm. looks pretty good. Yeah, you can tell that there's going to be a fair bit at Wakanda, mm. like just Hulk standing there with the Hulk Buster um, arm behind him. He's, you can tell that's Wakanda behind him. So who'd we get? We got like Tony Stark, Cap, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Black Panther, War Machine, Black Panther, Doctor Strange. Ant-Man's not in it, is he? Hulk. 
He no, probably it didn't, is. didn't say Paul Rudd in He's the trailer. He's on the poster, though. Or was that not an official poster? But... I think Ev- Evangeline Lilly was in the trailer. I think she was. Uh, okay. Wasp. I think yep. she was in there. All I right. saw that. Uh, Thanos, Loki with the Tesseract. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. obviously he did still. And Thor, he's still, yeah. He's, oh, he's got the eye patch. The eye patch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Also, Didn't Patrick see Groot, Graham. though. Didn't see Groot. Oh, Groot was at the end. Can you he see was, Groot? He was just behind Star-Lord. He was sort of peeking out from behind. Is him. he? Oh, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, full yeah. grown now? No, he's still like teenage Groot. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a few other like notes and tidbits and that because they had the Vanity Fair issue which had like you know had the big avengers article and stuff and that in it and apparently um you know marvel this avengers movie is sort of going to be the end of the current era of marvel films because i imagine the russo brothers they don't know what's going to happen after this film all they're focused on in this one they don't really know what's what's going to happen the only thing like they were told they were given a list of who they can and can't kill in the (laughs) movie so Expect a lot of people to die in this movie. Shit. Um, Don't touch Spider-Man. <laughs> he's just yeah, well, we've picture. got another Spider-Man movie coming, like, mm. soon, so I don't imagine he's going to die. If it's going to be anyone, it'll probably be, like, Robert Downey Jr. and Captain America and that. Because they would probably want to retire in that anyway. Mm. Well, and Downey I think Jr. half might. half the reason, like, why they want to kill them off, because I, I said this about Civil War. We talked about Civil War ages ago. Like, these Marvel movies don't really have any stakes like, any serious stakes, like, people getting killed or whatever. You know, Nick Fury's dead, but he's back. He's not actually dead. He's yeah. come back to life. Um, You know, someone else is dead, but they're not dead. They come back to life. We brought him back to life or whatever. You know, Rhodey, he gets zapped by Vision accidentally, and, like, he's, you know, paraplegic. He can't use his legs in that anymore. Yeah. By the end of the movie, they've got him in, like, this walking harness, and I'm like, you know what? In the next movie... He's going to be totally fine. He's going to be walking <laughs> yeah. around normally. The harness is going to be under his clothes. You can't see it. So there was no real stakes to any of that. Like no. in the moment, like in the first viewing, there were like some sort of stakes, but yeah. you know, they don't like carry those through. But there was a, um, they spoke with James Gunn and he mentioned, you know, like Marvel has to really like up the stakes and like really implement like long standing stakes, mm. like people dying and they stay dead. You know, if they want to like, they can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. You know, they have mm. to evolve. They have to keep, like, if they want the yeah. Marvel Universe to continue, they've got to, like, change their game. And they've mm. got to up their game. That's why things like Game of Thrones work so well, because you are scared that your favourite character is going mm. to die, because they will, everyone fucking They'll fucking dies. do it. <laughs> they will yeah. do it. And that's scary. And that actually makes a real intensity with for, for the viewer. Who wants to watch, you know, like, it's it's... But with Marvel movies, you kind of you know that your, your hero is going to win end of the day, and yeah, yeah, but yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they actually do with this movie. I'm keen to see what the runtime is because I want to know. I imagine it'll be probably around the two and a half hour, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I reckon I there'll be a hope bit it's of time a long in movie. there. I, yeah. hope it, I hope it's a bit longer. Everyone gets their sort of own time, and that. I mean, it's we've been building like ten years to this. Every man and his dog is going to go see it, so. Mm. I don't really think people are going to care if it's like a three-hour movie, unlike yeah. a like a Batman v Superman or something yeah. like that. Mm. I can see like um, Scarlet Witch or, or Vision maybe dying. I, I don't know. They're the kind of yeah. Character- well, they were like trying to pull the gem out of his head, like in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. they're the kind of s- off characters that you don't. You, you know, they're not going to have their own movies and such. Mm. You know, so they won't really make future money off them. I don't know. I just see them kind of being ticked off. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, Marvel have, like, they've got, like, 20 new films planned, like, in the pipeline for, yeah. like, after Avengers and stuff. But we spoke about this the other week, like, Disney and Fox being in talks, like, Disney in talks to buy Fox's, like, film and TV properties. Mm. So, you know, all their Marvel stuff, X-Men, Fantastic Four and that. Apparently, they're back in talks again, and they're very close to making a deal. That's the word on the grapevine at the oh, moment. Yeah? Like, it's not official or anything, but... You know, the whole Disney buying Lucasfilm thing, that was kept very secret, like, up until they just announced it. Like, Disney's bought Lucasfilm for $3.2 billion or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm, So, they kept that, like, a secret up until the announcement. But, yeah, you know, if this does happen, like, this is the perfect time for them to get it. Because after Avengers, they're like, okay, we've killed off all these people. We're going to start this new massive story arc. Like, we have X-Men, we have the Fantastic Four, we have... You know, Silver Surfer, we have all this stuff now. What could we do? Like, yeah. who could the new bad guy be? Doctor Doom, Galactus, mm. 
you know? Yep. They could incorporate that. That would be cool if they, like, they could do Avengers versus X-Men or something like that. They could do, like, you know, now mutants are, like, the new thing. Like, now mutants are in the picture. There's this whole, like, subculture of these, like, enhanced humans. You yeah. Know, these mutated people. That could be, like, the next major focus. Yeah. Like, other than, you know, Infinity Stones and all that sort of stuff. But... That would be really interesting. And, like, setting up a new villain. Like, oh, the end teaser. That's fucking Doctor Doom. He's the one pulling the strings from Latveria. <laughs> or Galactus is coming. He's coming. Beg your pardon. Mm. Um, You know, another space villain. But, you know, Galactus is coming to eat the fucking planet. Or something like yeah. that. You know, it it's, probably doesn't have that threat of, like, you know, the Infinity Gauntlet and all the Infinity, Infinity Stones. And, you know, just wiping out planets with a click of your finger and stuff. But Yeah. Yeah, you know, Marvel could make it work. They could do whatever they want. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that's very be, interesting. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But yeah, Infinity War. What? Let's, what, what we got a lot of movies. Six months? Come. Six months to Infinity War? Oh, really? Yeah. That's all. That's awesome. But we get Black Panther before that. Yeah. So we've got a bit to tide us over, and then yep. there'll be some sort of massive fucking teaser at the end of that, no doubt. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Anyway, good. better move on to our topic. Yeah, nice. Best movie fights. Yes. Let's so this do it. isn't this isn't a definitive list. This is just like some of our favorites or great movie fights that we're going to cherry pick. Obviously, there are so many fights out there in the world, like in films, we can't talk about them all. We could probably do future installments of this, you know, mm. down the road. But at the moment, we've just picked a few in that each, and we're just going to bounce back and forward and talk about some of our favorites and some really memorable ones. Turn the page to my notes. <laughs> Let me have a look. Boom. Do you want to start, mate? Oh, Kick I'd us off with I'd one. love to. What have I'd you love got? To. All right. I am going to start with... All right. I'm going to start with probably one of my one of my favorite fight scenes uh, in a movie. Fucking hit me. A brutal one. So, it's from um, The Mechanic. You know, that movie. Yeah. Jason St- Statham. Statham movie. We had to start um, with the Statham. <laughs> yeah. Only it's not Statham in this scene. It's the it's the guy. The, I'm not sure of his name. Ben Foster? Yeah. Must be, yeah. He isn't he the other guy who's like training to he's, be a mechanic as he's well? He's training to be a mechanic. Yeah, he's yeah like, Ben he's like, Foster. He's like yeah. the rookie. So um but there's that scene, um if anyone's seen the movie, it's oh, it's the best. It's like um he's basically he's he's not really supposed he's got a target. He's not supposed to track him down yet, but he does it anyway. And he goes and he tries to find this guy and he's this like eight foot tall, like bouncer guy he's supposed to kill. And he's watching him from a distance. Anyway, he um, he finds out like his details and stuff. Finds out he's like he's gay, and then he's like tries to lure him in, and so he he pretends to be gay, mm. and then tries to hit on him and all that stuff through the night. Lure him in close. And, yeah, yeah. They go home together, and then in the apartment, it's crazy because that's where he's. I like, remember this. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he that's where he's like, okay, now it's like no one's around, no witnesses. I can perfect time I can to do murder it. this guy. Yeah, and and he's um. And the, it, it all goes down. He's he's bit off way more than he can chew because this guy is huge and this Ben Foster is tiny. He's like a little short little guy. Yeah. <laughs> but um, tries to take him down. But oh, the entire scene after that, when this guy just sees red and he just goes nuts on Don't him. Don't they literally like smash nearly everything in the house? Yeah, like, everything. Through, like glass coffee tables. Yeah. He like smashes through a wall, smashes through paintings and stuff. Like, oh, the walls glass, and shit. everything. And... And it's brutal. He's like bleeding everywhere. They're both full bloody. And then it's just like, yeah, it goes on for ages and it is so brutal. That is a really good fight. Uh, I think he gets him in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he does. Yeah. Obviously, but only yeah. by the skin of his teeth. Though. Yeah. He's like, he, he only just got him. But he's massively fucked up afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a fucking brutal fight though. I like it because it's just so one-on-one and it's very... um. It's kind of realistic as well. It's not so over the top because he, he, it's like he's trying to assassinate this target. But, yeah, it's it's not an easy kill. Like, yeah. It's kind of like he's hunting. He's, like, taking down this fucking beast. That's yeah. what it feels like when you're watching it. It's like a witch contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> What's uh, yours, mate? I'm going to hit you with one. I've got, like, a big list here, but I'm going to go down to about three quarters of the way down. Um, Hector versus Achilles in Troy. Oh, so yeah. Brad Pitt and Eric Banner. Yeah, that's good. O- outside uh, the Trojan walls and stuff, with yeah. the rest of the Trojans and that watching, and Brad Pitt really angry that his cousin was just murdered by Hector because he was mm. dressed up as Achilles, and he's like, "He fought just like you. It was amazing." And Brad Pitt is like really pissed, and he's like, "You know, 
Eric Banner with his, I don't know what accent he's trying to do, <laughs> but it's it's not very good, but kind of amazing at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, that fight scene, like these two great warriors where at the beginning, like they're just trying to like size each other up and they're sort of just, and that music, like, dun, 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 yeah. and they're sort of just pacing each other before it starts to really ramp up. And Brad Pitt, when he gets, like, the spear and stuff, and he's, like, the spear over the shoulder and whipping it around and all yeah. that. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, I always love that fight. Yeah, that's mm. a really good one. That's love a big that sit, one. that movie, actually. Like, if you watch the extended version. The extended version's better. Mm. But it's, like, fucking three, three and a bit hours, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's a big watch. That fight seems like the only part I remember of that movie. Mm. I don't even remember the movie. And then he stabs him in the shoulder with the spear at the end, the broken spear, and oh, yeah. then whoosh, the sword through the chest, and yep. then he ropes him up and drags him off behind the chariot. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, no. Nice. But that's one from me. Yeah. I might do another one because my list is so big. Yeah. I've got one here that I imagine we've both got, but I'm going to save that for yeah. later. You'll probably hit that with me. Here's one for 80s fans. Inigo Montoya versus the Dread Pirate Roberts in The Princess Bride, their sword fight, the fencing fight that they have, very well choreographed, very funny, very funny movie. You've never seen The Princess Bride, Pat? No. Nah, no. that's a good watch. You. Mason probably liked that movie when he grows up, yeah. actually. Not not when he's a kid, but when he's a bit older, when he's probably about 10 or 15 or something like that. Yeah. I'll, show, I'll show it to him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a great fight. That was one I threw in there. Um, I'll do one more. Max versus Furiosa in Mad Max Fury oh, Road yeah. by the water tank. Yeah, that's the a good water one. truck. And he's like water, and he yeah. fucking sticks the water hose in, and then they're just yeah they have that big fight in yeah. front of the thing, and all the other girls know that. That's they're, intense. Yeah, that that's a great fight, and he mm. smashes. The, she smashes the thing and grabs the gun out, and then they and he pops the mag and that out, and yeah, that's yeah. a good fight. Yeah, that's a really good one. Mm. That's a good choice. That's a good fight. Yeah, nice. What else have I got? All right, I'll throw a quick one out, actually, from Drive, and it's, like, the motel fight scene, and he's, like, in the motel, and there's a couple of guys. That oh, where scene. they come through, like, the bathroom window and stuff. Yeah. And they blow a head off. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and it's, like, oh, it's brutal. And he has to take him down, and um, he's, like, hiding behind the door, and then, bang, he's right into it, and they got, like, shotguns and stuff, and he just blasts them away. Yeah. It's brutal as. That's a really good fight. Actually, that's more of a gunfight in a way but it's ah, I can't, yeah. it's not it's kind Much of more much of much. a survival thing but yeah and um, the elevator the elevator scene as well because there's a little bit of a scuffle fight before um yeah he stomps the dude's and face the hammer <laughs> he's got the hammer all right well i'll stick with me jason statham uh, the transporter i thought i'd better mention that yeah um there's some really like you could go through all the transporter movies he's there's some of the best fight scenes you'll see the scene where he's in but, um, I, I think it's like the bus depot and he's going yeah. like between the two buses. Yeah, he goes between. He and takes the, his top off. And yeah, he the uses two guys it. come and he and he takes his jumper off and he like wraps them up, like yeah. wrapping around the arms and punching yeah. the face, wrap around the head and like ties them both up. But it's like brutal as and he like one of the guys are coming at him with a knife and and he he gets the knife off him and he ends up stabbing him like in the leg and drags it through and that and then like it's. And kicks them through windows and stuff. And, mm. and then there's the whole oil fight scene. Like, he rolls around in that oil yeah, and Yeah, coats himself in the oil. And no one can gri- take a grip on him and, like, grab him. Yeah, that was a really good fight. Kiss of the Dragon. And there's, like, the... <laughs> e- fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jet Li. But that last fight, the boss... Uh, it's not really... The, it's before the boss. It's kind of like the, the twins. And they're, like, the blonde kind of twins. And one's, like, eight foot or seven foot or something. Goes up against them. That fight is amazing. They're like mm. smashing through windows, and and uh, Jet Li gets all his hands cut up, and and then um, he just bandages them back up and goes for it. I think he actually, um, I can't remember if he put like glass on the ends, and then no, I can't remember. But that's a good fight between mm. all those dudes, yeah, because they're all like really good fighters. And then he meets, he gets to the boss at the end, and he puts a little needle in his neck, and like, yeah, makes all the all his insides bleed out through ah. all the holes in his body. All his orifices. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's crazy. I will say one, it's it's like leading up to a fight. You never actually see the fight, but I imagine it was really good. Um, Liam Neeson versus the wolf at the end of the grey. Oh, where he yeah. like has the knife and he tapes the knife to his hand and he gets like the um the shot bottles like off the plane between his fingers, tapes them all to his hand and then he smashes them all. And then they're like, have this big run at each other. And I imagine that fight scene was really fucking good. <laughs> and then uh, after the credits, it shows 
the like this big close up like the wolf's body and Liam Neeson laying on the top and the wolf just like slowly still breathing like they fucked each other over and they're both gonna die anyway. Oh yeah. I imagine that fight team was really fucking good, so I'm gonna throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An imaginative one. I'll nice. do another one. Yeah, I'm go, do another go one. nuts. I haven't actually seen this movie, but I uh, there's a great YouTube channel. Um, the guys are called Cinefix. They do great, like, top ten lists and top five lists. But aside from just being, like, the top five car chases of all time or whatever, these guys are, like, super analytical and they really, like, delve deep, like, behind the films, like, their meanings of scenes and films and all that. And they're, like, if you're into, like, super analytical, like, filmmaking lists and stuff, check out Cinefix. I saw this on one of their lists a couple of weeks ago. It's from a movie called Killzone SPL. It stars Donnie Yen, and the scene is actually between Donnie Yen and Wu Jing. Now, Pat, I sent this to you today <laughs> yeah. so you could watch it because I told you about it. That was really good. Um, this fight scene's in an alleyway, and I don't know if anyone's ever seen Donnie Yen fight, but he is, like, one of the fastest, like, martial artists in the world. Like, you watch him fight, it's insane how fast he is. I think even, like, Jackie Chan and Jet Li have both said, like, he's, like, the fastest fighter they've mm. ever gone against. Like, he's the fastest in the world. This scene in the film, like, the the making of it, they filmed this scene in one night, and aside from working out, like, the story beats they had to work into the fight and, like, how it ends, like, 95% of it is just, like, off the cuff. Like, they just sort of ad-libbed, like, this entire fight because both of them were like, have trained together and they're so familiar with their, each other's fighting styles that they're like, we're just going to fight each other for real and we'll just film it. Mm. So they had this little contest, like, while they were filming, they're like, the first one to land hit wins. And so Donnie yen has got, like, this baton, like, an extendable baton, and Wu Jing's got, like, this knife, and they're just, like, fighting for real, like, in half this fight. And it's fucking insane. And these yeah. guys are, like, really fast. And it looks like choreographed as shit, but it's really not. Like, these two guys are just, like, fucking going at it. Like, yeah. at each other. And it's really cool to watch. And it's really cool to know that, you know, like, 90% of this fight is actually just, like, real. These two guys, like, these two well-trained guys just fucking going at it. Yeah. Like, for real. You know, like, not trying to hurt each other or anything, but, yeah, mm. like, they're really going at it. But, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. It was awesome to watch. It was really, really good, yeah. yeah I, I'd cool never fight. seen it before that either, so. I want to watch the whole film now. Mm. Yeah. yeah that was really I'll do good. another one because I've got a really big list. The Warriors... Versus the Baseball Furies in Riverside Park in the Warriors. So, oh, yeah. Ajax and Snow and Cowboy, when they take on the Baseball Furies. Mm. And he's like, I'm going to shove that bat so far up your ass, you'll turn into a popsicle or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah, that's just a cool fight, like the Baseball Furies and the Warriors and that. I can't even like remember that. Three one. on four. Yeah, it's yeah. a really cool fight. And they end up beating the Baseball Furies because they suck compared yeah. to the Warriors. But that's a cool fight. <laughs> I like that fight scene. Any fight from the Bourne films, particularly Jason Bourne versus Desh, from the Bourne Ultimatum. Yeah, I was going to mention that one. Where um, Jason Bourne runs, Jump. like, out onto the, the balcony and he jumps, like, over to the next building, like, through the window. Through the window, yeah. Yeah, and then Dash, like, tries to shoot him through the walls and they just have this big, like, super close, super tight, like, hand-to-hand -hand fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And there's, like, cool. no music. It's just, like, crazy fighting. Yeah, like, it's just, like, just intense fighting. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I really like that fight, actually. Mm, and I think he has a fight with Scott Atkins in... The second one, in Supremacy as well. Because mm. Scott Atkins plays, like, one of these nameless assassins. That they oh, yeah. Jason Bourne. I think it's in the second one. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Mm. Scott Atkins is the best. He is the best. Yuri Boyka. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me with another one, mate. Um, Unleashed. For, so, Jet Li from Unleashed. And that's the movie or, where... Or um, Danny the Dog in America. Yeah. yeah, they call him Danny the Dog. Oh, yeah, that, that's what the movie title is there, is it? Mm. Yeah, it's awesome. Like basically, Jet Li's brought up like a dog, and he's he's got all these different instincts and shit because he's been lived lived in a cage his whole life, pretty much chained. He wears this collar. Yeah. yeah, he's got that collar and that. And when they take the collar off, he's unleashed. He he goes like a rabid dog. He, he fucking. Mm. But it's it's fighting. It's like he he kicks absolute ass. That movie itself is actually really good all round. But the fight scenes I loved, um, like when he takes that collar off and he just goes nuts, mm. especially when they put him in the fighting ring and he's like, they um, put money on who's going to win and stuff. That's really interesting. But the fight scenes are like brutal as when he hits people, it just sounds like someone's just did a big roundhouse slap around your face. Like yeah. it's loud as hell. I watched one um, of those scenes again today. Like the impact of those hits is like really there. Yeah. Mm. And it's just like, and he keeps going and, and he's so quick. 
as well. So he's like really, really quick. That's a really good one. I thought that was worth worth saying. I actually really like a recent one, Thor Ragnarok. I really love that fight between Thor and Hulk yeah. in, the, in the ring. That's definitely I didn't worth, even think of that. <laughs> that's, that's worth a really good mention because that, that fight really got me going, actually. I was mm. I was like on the edge of my seat, like, oh, this is intense. Like, this is really good. That was really, really good. That was a cool fight scene, yeah. Yeah. There was that also that fight scene in Justice League, which I can't mention because it's kind of a spoiler. So. Mm. That in, one in the middle of the movie in the middle, that we keep yeah. talking about. Yeah, that one, that one. That yeah. entire fight there, what happens there, was amazing. Yeah, so, um, oh, one more. Thor and Hulk in the Avengers, um, when they're fighting inside the helicarrier. Oh, in the helicarrier, yeah. And they're fighting, t- like, against each other. Like, oh, that, mm. that's really good. I really enjoyed that fight. And then he calls the hammer and fucking wham, he's yeah. in the face. And- I just like the fact that they're both, and, and the Hulk buster and, and Hulk. In Age of Iron Ultron, Man and, yeah. and Hulk bust, that is it's like, go epic. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Yeah, that's an epic fight. Yeah, that's a pretty cool fight. Mm. But the best fight, the biggest fight, the best fight in the MCU, yeah. Captain America. Versus the Winter Soldier yes. on the freeway oh. in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. That blew us away, didn't that it? That makes me moist in all the moistiest <laughs> places just thinking about it. That's like on... That beats a lot of movies in general, mm. actually, in fights. That's but the fact that they're both super soldiers against each mm. other is just really fucking insane. Sebastian Stan, when he pulls that fucking knife, oh, I just melt. I melt in the chair. He flips it around and yeah. then he catches it. And it's like straight in. Mm. That's the best like he moment. blocks it and then he flips it around and he's yeah. Like he blocks it and he drops it down to his like his hand below and grabs it and just like keeps going. If you watch the extras, he actually there's a clip of Sebastian Stan like he's just practicing, just like the knife flips like yeah. around in his hand the like, whole time, and he's just yeah. He just Surely that it. would have to be a blunt knife. Mm. Oh yeah, it'd be a stunt knife, probably a rubber one. Yeah. Oh okay. Yep. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that scene is fucking epic. When he hits him in the arm and his arm's all fucked up and he does that big real when he Yeah, yeah. Gets his arm back is that when he puts again. the shield in his arm and his yeah. mechanical arm and then he like Yeah. He sort of unkinks really cool. it and then spins it. It was like real you get that And wasn't there a moment where he, the the winner soldier slams or smashes against Punches him in the shield, shield. his yeah. shield and then his arm adjusts or something or shifts? Like the mechanical arm actually changes to get stronger or something mm, like you see it like compress and yeah it compresses like, or yeah. something it was yeah. awesome like how it did that that's a fucking great scene yeah everything about that scene the way it was filmed was fucking beautiful Legendary. let's watch it now yeah oh, let's pause do it. it and watch it <laughs> oh that was the best <laughs> that was the best <laughs> i got one here sherlock holmes versus mcmurdo in the first sherlock holmes film yeah with, it, um in the fighting ring robert downey it? jr where he's in the fighting ring and it's a yeah that's good and he's fighting the dude and then He's, he's going to call it quits, but the guy, like, you know, sort of gets him back in. And then he, like, goes through the fight, like, beat by beat, like, mm. bro, like punch him in, you know, punch him in here to, like, disorient him and then follow it with a right uppercut and all this sort of yeah. shit. He just, like, dissects the fight. He throws the hanky to, like, Yeah, throw the hanky and, like, disorient him and stuff. And then, and then he's, like, boom, and he just plays it out, just, like, how he planned it all out. And the slow mo was amazing. Yeah. It was really good. Mm, I, it, I, it actually looked like he hit, too. Yeah. Like, to, to get those effects when um, the fist hit the face and you see it all wobble and that, you would have really had to hit him quite hard to make that happen. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't have been 3D. It's like, Guy movie. Would it? Yeah. Yeah. He really... They would have really hit each other. I reckon it would have. What's what's a knock in the face, you know, for a great shot in the film? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was probably medium hits. I don't think that would have been too hard. But. That's a cool scene. Major Dutch Schaefer versus the Predator in Predator. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> everything leading up to that, like Dutch, where he's getting ready and he makes, like, the bow and arrow yeah. and everything, and then he lights the fire, and the Predator comes running. Yeah. And um, just everything, sort of the cat and mouse to begin with. Yeah. And then the actual, like, fight, you know, takes the mask off. The preparation. You're one, you're one ugly motherfucker, and then they just fucking slug it out. Well, Arnie gets his ass kicked, but... Yeah. But, yeah, that entire, like, last 20, 25 minutes of that movie. You mm. don't see movies like that anymore. Like, no. Everyone rushes them these days. The movies are piss weak. To now. have him, like, it's more realistic. Like, he's in the mud. He's trying to analyze how is he going to beat this guy. And just mm. taking, like, that 20 minutes to plan it. And he's, like, setting all the traps and stuff. It just made the film, like doing that kind of thing like- and actually like editing of american films now there's this video you showed me last year or the year before it compares like current american cinema to like um 
uh, like a Jackie Chan film, like a Hong Kong mm. Jackie Chan film. Like Jackie Chan, like when he was directing, like he barely cuts because, like, if you cut, yeah. like on the punches, like you miss the impact. Like yeah. you, you miss that realism. That's why his scenes are always like very long cuts and they yeah. have very little cuts. And Jackie himself made it that way because he's like, I don't want him to be cut because he just miss everything. Mm. But then you jump that. over to like an American film and. You know, they always cut just as, like, the punch lands or it's about to mm. land. They cut to a different angle. So, you miss that impact. Yeah. So, I guess they Even dampen, in like, dampen the violence. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like, even in Bourne films and stuff like that, they do it a lot. They cut heaps and it's just, I don't know how why they do it, but, yeah. It's just soft. Yeah. Because <laughs> they can't handle the violence. What else did I have? Um, what else you got, buddy? Hit me. Well, go DC now. I actually really enjoyed the fight between Batman versus Superman in, in that movie. Yeah. I actually really liked that entire fight at the end, even though it took like an hour and 45 to get there. <laughs> 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 that was really good. Like that entire fight was brutal as hell and, mm. and, and uh, amazing all around. Like the all the visuals were just stunning. I thought that was great. Go that one step further though, but Batman versus all the goons in the warehouse, which yeah. is like straight out of the Arkham game. Yeah, that was great. Beating the shit out of guys and shooting them with grappling hooks. It and- was like it was out of like the Arkham games, wasn't mm. it? it, was, it was, that's why I loved it so much because I remember playing all the Arkham games and I was like, if only they did a movie like this and mm. then they've done That's it, how like- you expect like Batman. Like he could he could yeah. easily take on 10 guys. Yeah. Like no worry. Like he's, tr- he's well trained enough. Like he could, he could do that. Yeah. Mm. It'd be great. Uh, another w- worth mentioning is the raid, and uh, anything from the raid, anything from the raid, all three, but mainly uh, the build up toward the the main. Uh, he's quite subtle, really. Through you only realise that he's a big threat towards the end. There's this one guy who's like the main bad kind of. What's his name? The villain. dog, the Mad Dog, Mad Something Dog, I think like his that. Name is, I think, yeah, and then. Yeah, so, but, and, and, like, as it gets to the end, he has to go up against him, and it's, like, a real threat, like, because he is the best fighter, apparently, and... Isn't and, that the um, same? It's in the apartment. I think so. And it's it's him and his brother versus, like, Mad Dog, Yeah, or there's, yeah two of them against mm. him. And he, oh, brutal. It's, it's, that was a great, great fight scene there. Mm. Um... I got one. Yeah. You can't talk about great fight scenes... Without talking about the Matrix, yeah, and as Neo versus Agent Smith yep. in the subway, yeah, when they run at each other and they leap and they, you know, the spinning and the, oh. you know, the bullet time gunshots and that, and just yeah, that entire fight scene. Just we were like, in awe in our like seventeen-year-old bodies. We were, just like, <laughs> we were just in the cinema. This like, is oh, amazing. Oh, How do they do this? this awesome. How do they do this? I've never seen anything oh, like it. Loved it. I'm seventeen. Back in the day. <laughs> Um, choreographed by Yuan Wu Ping, like one of the most famous, like, um, yeah. Hong Kong choreographers, like Crashing Tiger and Dragon. Oh, yeah. Kill Bill, like, he's moved on to, like, a lot of US yeah. films and that, like, in the last 15, 20 years and stuff, and yeah, choreographed nice. all those as well. But yeah, can't talk about Yuan Wu Ping and his choreography without talking about The Bride versus Crazy 88, 88 in Kill Bill Volume 1. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was good. It's fun. It's kind of silly at the same time, like the eye rips and and yeah, doesn't she yeah, like it's kind of campy, pluck and an stuff, eye out or something like yeah, that. plucks the dude's eye out like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, just like lots of limbs slicing and over the top like blood spraying out everywhere. Yeah. That was so much fun watching it really, that in the um, cinema. Yeah, I think that really um, opened up a whole new kind of genre of, mm. of cinematic uh, fighting, wasn't it? Like having all the blood spray like over the top craziness. People loved it. Mm. People were all over. I it. um. I was looking forward to that film for a very long time, and I planned on going and see it twice on the opening day. So yep. I was going to go see it, and then I was going to go see it straight after. And I talked to Bob that day, and Bob wanted to see it, but he didn't have any money. So I was like, look, dude, I'll shout you, and we'll go together, and we'll watch it. And we did, and we all went and saw it. Yeah. And Ian come with us, but Ian was, like, underage, so I went and bought his ticket and then come over and give it to him. <laughs> and then I went over to buy another ticket, and they're like, didn't you just buy a ticket? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> buy, my, buy another one. But I want to buy another one. Because <laughs> I love this movie so much. And this was back in the day <laughs> where we got like student discounts and movie tickets were like $8. Yeah. Remember those days? Yeah. They were oh. like $11 normally, but when we got like a student discount, yeah. they were like $8 movie yeah, tickets. Yeah, they were. 
You can buy a fucking a bag of lollies in that for eight dollars now. <laughs> no, like know. once we go to all sorts, you get it's a about medium coke for eight fifty or something. Fucking hell, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you buy a large coke and it's nearly ten bucks. Oh, You're like, fuck off. That's why I go to all sorts over there. Rather the drink it out of a urinal. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I'll just fill my drink bottle up out of the bloody urinal glug. Oh, glug. Shocking. Just fucking put the old uh, cube in there. Jeez, give it another 10 years. What are we going to look at? $50 a movie ticket? That's and- a $50 Coke, thank you. Fuck off. <laughs> Jesus. You keep your bloody Coke. Oh, no. I've got some more. Oh, this is great. Yeah. This is great. Anchorman. The, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Channel 4 News Team versus the Evening News Team. Oh, that's great. Versus the uh, Channel 2 News, the Public News Team, the Spanish Language News. The massive news team fight. Yeah. No touching of the hair of face. <laughs> and that's it! <laughs> but then I watched it again today and, like, Ron's, like, hitting everyone in the face and yeah. Tron's being thrown and, like, Brick, where'd you get the grenade? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And he's just, like, holding the grenade out. He's like, ah! <laughs> I love it in Anchorman 2 and Jim Carrey's in there as the Canadian. Yeah, Will Smith. The Canadian and one. And he's like... Canadian news team. He's like, sorry. He hits... As soon as he hits someone, he's like, sorry. Because <laughs> they're so polite, the Canadian news team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, love I, that. I did the love. I've been wanting to watch Anchorman for the last week. I yeah. think I might have to watch it over the weekend. Yeah. That is such a fun movie. <laughs> it's an awesome movie. Mm. Uh, I'll throw one at you. Um, Spider Man Homecoming, Spidey vs. the Vulture, like toward Which the end. Which one? The one at the end? Toward the end of the movie, I'd mm. say. I like, the, um, I like the fairy. I like the fairy fight scene. Do you? Yeah, yeah, that is good. That is good. I like the end one. It's just. Way more brutal as well. Like, Vulture is not holding back. Even though Spidey gets his ass kicked, um, I really, really liked how that all played out. Like, yeah. It was, yeah, it was awesome. Really good. Uh, another one. This is f- actually, I probably should have said with this first because it's one of my favorite fights. Caesar versus Cobra in uh, Planet yeah, of the Apes. Yeah, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Mm. Oh, that fight is amazing. And not only just for the fighting and... Because they're apes clashing against each other. The fucking emotion. That's awesome. But yeah, the emotion. There's like, there's, there's actually a lot behind it that you're, mm. you're rooting for Caesar. And there's a real like, emotional weight. Yeah, a lot of weight to the fight, and it's, mm. it's heavy. Like it's, it's um really gripping. And um, I got one for you, boy. And this like it's nuts. Yeah. The hallway fight from Inception. Yeah, in yeah. In the dream with the rotating like oh, hallway right. stuff, like Arthur where he's fighting one of the goons. That was that. clever, wasn't it? And yeah, like you know, they're in the dream and the the things flipping around yeah. and like the hallway starting to flip and they're fighting and yeah, mm, really well clever. done. Really well done. That was really good. I got a couple more. I'm gonna throw a few more at you. Yeah, right. go go nuts, mate. Uh, the intro to Logan. Yeah, where Logan's drunk and and they're trying to. Steal, steal the steal wheels, the steal the tyres off, oh, off, yeah. uh, off the limo. Yeah. And then the guy just shoots him with a shotgun and he gets back up and mm. and they, yeah, they have a the bit of a fight and he goes berserker and he's fucking cutting limbs and that off. And oh. yeah, that was great. That was that a great was, fight scene. I think that was really great for the f- for first seeing that because this is kind of the first time we've really seen limbs and that flying around like and that. And it really it? like sets up the movie, like yeah. sets the tone. Like The yep, tone, it's nuts. It's going to be more of this. There's a lot of R-rated kind of, yeah, people yeah, are losing. slicing it. Oof. And like the, the, the claws through the skull. Oh, yeah, like, where they're all struggling. You can see and them popping like, through. <laughs> like through oh, the skull. And you can just see the little bits coming out the top. Just like oh. you're, fu- you're not getting up from that. No, mate. you're gone. Mm. That was awesome. Let's see. What else have I got? Can't talk about fight scenes without talking about Star Wars. Oh, yeah. So, Luke versus Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Where yep. Luke gets his fucking hand cut off and finds out who his daddy is. And, and, yeah, that's a really great fight scene. Like, Vader's fucking on point in that scene. Yeah. Like, he's coming like a bull watcher. Yeah, that's great. But we can't talk about Star Wars without going a bit further. We know everyone doesn't don't really like this film. But uh, The Phantom Menace. So, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn versus Darth Maul. Oh, yeah. That first scene when they fight, mm. and that, that's actually quite good. That was kind of like... That is good. You know, the big setup, like, this is kind of the new Star Wars. This is the very, like, dance flourishes and, like, sort of hard-hitting faster, like, lightsaber duels. Yeah. And I have to, like, give a bit of an honourable mention to Revenge of the Sith as well, because I do like the final fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan, even though it's more... 
Mm. It's more of a dance routine, so it's just like lots of like dancey, like f- lightsaber, like flipping around, Isn't and like it crazy, lots of flourishes like, and, and stuff. But like jumping on the over the lava thing, yeah, and on stuff, the like, yeah, on but then it's like and- way over the top, isn't it? But it's it's pretty good, yeah. Mm. Like I remember, the, yeah, lightsaber flourishes and everything. And yeah, that. Yeah, I know yeah. it's very over the top, and it just looks like a well choreographed dance. But you know, I've always had a soft spot for that fight. Yeah, so. yeah, especially toward the end there. Yeah, gets real mm. gutsy, doesn't it? <laughs> gets real gutsy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Australian term, gutsy. Gut- Gutsy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw another one at you. Something a little bit over the top, speaking of over the top. Here we go. But deliberate. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty much any fight between any of them boyfriends, because he has to... The seven evil exes. He, he has to go up against all the ex-boyfriends mm. to win the girl. And, uh, yeah, but it's all like superhero fighting kind of style. flowers. And they're just... Oh, all them fights were just the best. And the visuals were quite amazing for that mm. time, too, I would say. It's not really that old a movie, but... I really like that movie. I love it. Yeah, and it's just so movie. fun and uplifting. Like They made it really enjoyable to watch. Mm. That's what I loved. And it was almost co- like out of a comic book as well. It was really, really Yeah, it cool. was like the closest like you'll probably get yeah. to like, watching a comic book on screen. Yeah. Mm. And another one, Kick-Ass in Kick-Ass. You know, the, the little girl, and she's like... Has to go up Hit girl in, in the hallway at the end. Hit girl, um, yeah, yep, that one going through and she has to, that's pretty. And then he flies in with a jetpack and yeah, that's straight awesome. out of San Andreas. Yeah, <laughs> even with um, Kick-Ass himself, the first part, when he gets his ass beat, like, because that was really kind of cool to, you know, it's, it's he's a, out the reality. Front of, out he's, the front of, like, the convenience store or whatever. He gets stabbed as well, I think. Yeah, he got stabbed. And then everyone's filmed him and stuff. Yeah. Mm. It's just, like, really hits home, like, oh, no one can be a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I've got five. I've got five more. Go nuts, mate. Go for it. Yuri Boyka versus Dolo yes. in Undisputed 3. I was waiting for and that. Just that bring it on track. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> Anything Scott Atkins, any oh. Yuri Boyka fight, they're all insane. He's like, the best. He is insane. What about and You him? actually talk to him. Fuckhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's my email buddy. We he just <laughs> emailed you out of the blue. It's like, I'm Scott Atkins. Did, How a, few, you going? did a few t shirt designs for him. He was a good. He, what about the fight with him up against Statham in um, un- Expendables? Oh, in Expendables too. Yeah, he, that was he, fucking great. He cops a propeller to the face. Yeah, the propeller in the head. That's <laughs> oh. the best. Yeah, they have that that uh, knife oh, fight. That is epic. Yeah, that, that fight. was fucking great. It went for a good while too. That fight, like it was really good. Yeah, that was good. Even Van Damme and Stallone at the end of that, mm. it was a bit more hard hitting. Yeah, that's Stallone right. Stallone was like a bull, and Van Damme was trying to be a bit more quick on his feet and whatever. And I think that was really good. Like that, doing the Expendables, I think it had to happen because it was such a good nod to all the old eighties flicks that we all love. Mm. And then they're all back, and and then they're just taking the not taking the piss out of themselves, but they're like really paying homage. to yeah. all that that. That genre of sort of and 80s like you said, films. the the fight against our favourites, they're fighting against each other now mm. and shit. Like, oh, that's only that's like a dream come true, really, if you think about it. Yeah, seeing all your favourite action Scott heroes. Scott Atkins makes a really cool like head henchman, like head sidekick henchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does a really good job of that. Yeah, ex- ex- except in um, Doctor Strange, like he wasn't as good. He didn't really get much time. To he didn't even talk. Did he? Didn't no, even talk. I don't think he had any. No, to be honest. He was just some magical kind of um, soldier dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were they? I can't even remember what they were called. Anyway, <laughs> I've got a few more. Yep. First of all, I'm going back to one from my childhood. Optimus Prime versus Megatron Ooh. in Transformers the movie. Uh, the animated film. It's just such a ballsy fight. And then yeah. Prime ends up getting killed. And oh, it's gutsy. That's gutsy. <laughs> That's gutsy for me. Yeah, nice. A um, couple more. Riggs versus Mr. Joshua in Lethal Weapon, where they're fighting on uh, Murtar's front lawn. Oh, yeah. And, like, all the fucking water and that. The hydrants got all the cops are around. They're like, leave him, leave him, and let him sort it out. And then Riggs fucking beats the shit out of Mr. Joshua. <laughs> they beat the shit out of each other, and then he finally gets him in the fucking chokehold at the end. Yeah. Yeah, Gary Busey is, is, is crazy, dude. But he plays like an albino, dude. It's, fucking, <laughs> it's the, the funniest thing. What else have I got? I've got a couple more. I've got two more. First of all, this is one you probably haven't seen, but John Nada versus Frank Armitage in They Live. This is just like this massive street fight. This is John Carpenter film. Yeah. Uh, the basis of the film is it's pretty much like this um, drifter played by Roddy Piper. He he gets a job like working at a construction site and like he he ends up like finding these like box of like sunglasses and yeah. he just like puts them on. 
And when he puts them on, he can see, like, all this, like, subliminal messaging, like, in the world. Like, all these billboards and stuff. They, like, he puts them on and he can see, like, what's really underneath them. Like, all the subliminal messaging. Like, obey. Like, watch more TV. Buy more goods. You know, all this sort of shit, like, trying to keep. And then he finds out that, like, all these aliens have, like, infiltrated Earth. And they're, like, imitating his human. So, like, when he puts the glasses on, he can see the aliens, like, in their real forms, and when he takes them off, he sees them as humans and that again, <laughs> and it's real fucked up. Anyway, there's this scene where I... Actually, last week when I was talking about Spawn, the animated series, I've said this before, but I always get his name mixed up because he's got two first names. Last week, I called him David Keith again, but his name's fucking Keith David. I'll get it right <laughs> eventually. There's this scene with Roddy Piper and Keith David where... Roddy wants him to try on the glasses because he's trying to explain the situation to him. He's like, man, I'm not putting on those fucking sunglasses. And he's like, you put them on. And they just have this big brawl. They have this big fight. And it's this fight scene which goes for like eight minutes. Oh, and like stops and starts. And they're beating the shit out of each other. And he's like, you try these glasses on. And they're like apologize to each other. And they're like kissing and making up. And, and then they're fucking like, there's this one scene where Keith David's on top of Roddy Piper. And he just knees him in the balls like four times. He's like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> And it's just this knockout, like, drag-out fight, but these two big dudes, they just beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. Just, like, because he just wants him to try these glasses on because he wants to show him, like, what's going on. He's like, man, I don't need to try on no glasses. What are you talking about is bullshit. And they just have this big <laughs> fight which drags on for, like, eight minutes. It's, like, one of the best fights ever. It's <laughs> That's great. awesome. It's a great scene. That's good. Mm. Nice. Have you got another one? Because I've got one more. Yeah. Uh, I thought I might mention Kong Skull Island. I really yeah. liked um, the, the finale. Uh, yeah, one of the yeah the finale. Yeah, he like rips the the creature's tongue out through its guts. It's like <laughs> like really cool. Yeah, big fight through um, big monster fight there. I yeah. love those kind of ones. Um, I thought it might be worth mentioning. Fast and the Furious, like they had a really good fight between. Um, I think it was Stath and the Rock. That was really good in the office building. Oh, uh, you probably haven't seen it. It was I think it was Fast and Furious. Yeah, I've seen them all. You yeah, they have the fight. Yeah, they yeah. have the fight in the office building. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. That was a good one. Good fight. And there's another fight, I think, in one of the early ones between uh, Vin Diesel and, and the Rock. And the yeah, Rock. in the fifth one. Yeah, that was that was awesome. They beat the fuck out of each other. Yeah, and that is all I had on there. Yep, Bought Ultimatum was on there, but yeah, we've already chatted about yep. that. And, and my final fight. Ripley versus the Alien Queen in Aliens, mm. where she wears the power loader suit. Yeah, that's awesome. Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> that's a Classic. great scene. Like, really well done, like, how they just did that power loader scene. Like, watching Sigourney Weaver, like, in this power loader. Yeah. Like, actually, like, swinging these arms and that around, like, these mechanical arms, like, real slow. Mm. Like, you know, the mechanism would. But apparently, there was, like, a dude, like, she would stand in the front of the frame and there was a dude, like, in behind, like, actually in it, like, in the legs and stuff, and he was the one, like, operating it. Oh, yeah. And she just, like, went with the movements and the actions and stuff. Yeah. And then cutting to miniatures and that, they had a lot of great miniature work and stuff in there, like, this big swing and hitting the alien queen, that cut to the miniature, like, being knocked over and stuff. And yeah, nice. Just really, really well done. Yeah. They, they don't do shit like that anymore. No, that was they good. They don't do miniature stuff like that anymore. That was a good fight, that one. They did miniature stuff in The Dark Knight. Like mm. with the tumbler where the Joker's in the truck and he shoots the tumbler with the rocket launcher and it like jumps and takes the hit and then it cuts to the guys and it has the shot of it like barreling through and smashing everything. That was a miniature shot. All right. Because like, you notice the bottom of the tumbler is like all flat. You don't like see any of the guts, like the car or the mechanism or anything underneath it. All right. It's just like a flat, like black bottom on the car. Yeah. And yeah, it was like a big miniature in that and miniature shot and stuff. and. <laughs> mm. Very cool, like, miniature work and stuff. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. nice. That's all I have, actually. That's I thought it might also be worth mentioning. I'm, I've always been secretly a big Jackie Chan fan. You like, love Jackie Chan. Always. Like, since my childhood, I watched all Jackie Chan movies. I didn't really miss any. And just, oh, like... But some of my favourites were probably, like, from um, Who Am I and Mr. Nice Guy. Like, I used to love those kind of movies. <laughs> there was one called Gorgeous, but... I watched the clip of it earlier and, and I've totally forgotten how fucking goofy it was. It was like almost, yeah, uh, like I mentioned to you, it was almost like watching a cartoon, like the way mm. they act. But the fighting is what I watch it for. Um, I don't even watch the story because like, it's just so stupid. But then the the fighting... The American, the American great. Jackie Chan films really, yeah. Yeah, and but it's just great because it's like Jackie Chan's like this clean kind of... Um, 
like he's he's cares about his looks and all that stuff and he's he always wears white and he's like real rich as well he's kind of like a bruce wayne but like and he just wears all white all the time like mm. head to toe all his clothes um but then he goes up against a villain and, and he's the villain's like all black like he he just wears black and it's i don't know why but it was really cool to see him fighting together because it's just pure white against pure kind of like a yin versus yang kind yeah of thing. yeah and the guy is just like this um he kind of looks like a scott adkins kind of guy too and he's just going up against him and he's real he's real bad like in the, really the clash between them was uh, they're so super quick this is probably jackie chan and his prime too like and they were both just quick as anything it was yeah really good fight but no yeah big jack jackie chan fan and there's a, a lot of good fights in there because just- jackie chan's really been into that physical comedy like working comedy yeah. into his fight scenes like yeah when he was younger, sort of like in the 80s, like in the early 80s and stuff, like he mm. was more sort of straight up sort of martial arts and that. But as he started to direct his own films, yeah. it really worked, started to work into uh, a lot of comedy and physical comedy. And that's where that came from, especially yeah. when it came to America. Like the Rush Hour movies and that, mm. like, you know, they have like all the bloopers and stuff, like where he's fighting the guys and he tries to jump through like the window, like slide through like yeah, the little, the little and he gets great stuck. thing. Yeah, yeah he and gets he gets stuck, stuck in there like, and stuff. Really tries to work that physical comedy and that into he does there. All but- his stunts too. Like he's done some insane stunts over the years and I've seen some of the bloopers and he's like busted his ankle and his foot's like popping out the side mm. and stuff, like when he's jumped off this bridge onto this um barge underneath. Like just stuff. Is like that, that Rumble in the Bronx? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rumble in the Bronx. Like stuff like that, he's done some insane shit. He nearly I, electrocuted himself to death when he. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember lights. what that movie is, but where he grabs the pole and he slides down, yeah. and he goes through like all the lights and then through the glass window at the bottom. Yeah, all those lights were real. So as he was going down, like he got electrocuted a couple of times. Yeah, and apparently. Like, the pole was real, and he had, like, no padding on his hands. Mm. So, like, by the time he got to the bottom, like, all the skin was gone. Like, he yeah. burnt, like, all the skin off his hands and, and everything. Apparently, something broke his fall as well. And if that wasn't there, he would have, like, died, apparently. Mm. Yeah. So, that was nuts. Like I think he did that twice, that mm. pole slide thing. Yeah. He did it the first time, and something happened, and then he wasn't happy with it, and then they did it again. Oh, he's but, done yeah. some crazy stuff, hey? I really want to watch, like, the Drunken Master films. I don't know if, how many of them there's been, but mm. Jackie Chan invented the the drunken fighting style. Yeah. He? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's a scene in... Which Marvel show was it? Oh, Iron Fist. There's a scene in Iron Fist where, I think it's like in episode five or six or seven or something like that, they're, they've flown somewhere and they're going to, like, look in some building or some warehouse or something. There's this guy sitting there and he's, like, passed out in the corner bit like he's drunk and stuff he's like the guard that's like on duty and he's he like does the drunken like fighting <laughs> style and stuff you know like you know drinks all the grog and he's like all like these drunken moves and shit yeah. and like he fights like danny rand and he has like this whole drunken fight that'd actually be really good just for a watch i might find that later i'll link it to you just yeah. to watch that scene yeah, yeah i really like that that drunken style is like really interesting mm. Mm. And also Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, anything Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah. Like inventing like a martial art, Jeet Kune Do. There's mm. a scene in Enter the Dragon, like um, Jackie Chan was one of the extras in Enter the Dragon. Oh, yeah. And like yep. we're all like, he's, Bruce Lee's getting attacked by all these guys. Like Jackie, one Jackie Chan's Chance. one of the guys behind him. And he's like, yeah, grabs him and... That's his first appearance in... One of his first appearances in film, actually, Jackie Chan's, yeah. Mm. And that's how he got his foot in the door. Mm. Mm. I think I heard a story, Jackie Chan tell a story that he actually fought Bruce Lee for real. Yeah. I think Bruce Lee kicked his ass or heard about like that. that. Yeah. Because mm. Bruce Lee would, like, take any challenge. Like, anyone come up to him, like, I could beat you in a fight or whatever you want to fight. He would, like, boom, take it. Yeah. He pretty much just, like, took out all these guys. Didn't he invent, like, the one-inch punch or something as well? It's, like, puts his fingers there and then he punches. I think so. I don't, I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not the biggest Bruce Lee fish in art. Yeah. Know. That's yeah. a really cool, like, those those ones are really cool, those kind of... Yeah, those fighting styles are really Apparently awesome. Apparently, there was a story, I think, it was I think it was Bruce Lee. He was at some nightclub or whatever with his girlfriend or his wife or something like that, and these guys were there, and they were hassling his, his, his lady friend, giving him a hard time, and he's like, oh, you know, they left, and this group of guys, like, met him outside, and apparently, don't know if it's true or not, but they he sent them all to the hospital. Yeah, didn't they put that into, uh, they included that into the movie that they made about Bruce Lee, didn't they? And, like, they tried to... Film that scene. What was that movie called again? Was it Way of the Dragon? Enter the Dragon or something. Way like of the that. Dragon, I think. Didn't didn't his son play him in that? Brandon, uh, Lund, I think. I think so. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, and that, and that like all the sailors and stuff, like it's like the a bunch of marines and stuff around that are giving mm. him a hard time, and yeah, he went up against them sure. or something. I've got this um Bruce Lee documentary out there. I bought it ages ago, but I just haven't watched it yet. I might have to pull that out mm. and watch it. Mm. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Anyway, I that. think that's it, bud. Yeah, awesome. I wrap effort. it up. Sounds good. Cool. So if people want to find you online, Patrick Brown, where can they find you? Uh, you can go to patrickbrownart.com for my official website or DeviantArt. You can find me uh, under uh, just Patrick Brown. And on Facebook, you can go to uh, my Facebook page at Patrick Brown Art. And there we have it. If you want to call Patrick Brown, his phone number is... <laughs> six seven. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want to find the Beta Geeks online, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Beta Geeks pod. If you want to listen to the show, you can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on iTunes and you can find us on YouTube. You can listen to the show on SoundCloud and iTunes, but you can also download the show. So if you want to take the show on the go with you to the gym, you're working out, you want to listen to us, have a bit of a chuckle. Do it. Hear about fight scenes <laughs> while you're at the gym while you're working out. Yep. Picture that you're Mortal up, Kombat on. Bring it on. The song. Yeah, that's a great track. Um, if you want to buy a t-shirt, you can go to T Public and yep. buy a t-shirt. And if you want to check out all our songs, our Drop the Beard playlist, you can go to Spotify and search for Beard of Geeks or Drop the Beard for our 2017 Drop the Beard playlist. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'll have to add those songs to the playlist when I get back. What about did you add last week's? Uh, yeah, I think so. Good man. I've, uh, I've, Pat's in charge of the Spotify playlist. I'll double check that. <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Uh, he only cares about it when he's on the show. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. These people I've got to deal with, folks. <laughs> anyway, that's it, guys, for another week. Patrick Brown's been here. Pat, thanks for turning up this week. Hey. I'm so glad I didn't have to talk to an empty chair today. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone. And we'll see you all next week on the Beta Geeks. Hey. 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 Get bloody out of here. Get out of here. Go on. Go on. <laughs>